the federal government's proposing another round of anti-terror laws. We're always told whenever there's a new round introduced that you know this will be the 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 final you know phase to put it put it all uh, you know into. In, 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 keeping us safe, but this la this latest round, they're proposing terror suspects to be detained for up to 14 days without charge, and they also want to roll out facial recognition software uh, to uh, CCTV cameras uh, around the nation. And they had a COAG meeting last week where all premiers on site. Uh, people were even surprised that even Daniel Andrews was on board, but I suppose if he's, you know, for a thought police state, he'd be for a national security state as well. Uh, now, both left and right uh, civil libertarian groups are alarmed, and yeah, I, I definitely uh, am concerned about this. I mean, uh, civil liberties, it's, you know, it's not always a, a left-right issue. And like I said in my introduction, I mean, the, the previous round of anti-terror laws was the metadata laws that apparently keeping all our data for two years was going to keep us safe. I haven't, you know, seen, you know, any any evidence that it has kept us safer uh, from terrorism. I, th I think, you know, and I I'm the last person who, you know, wants a, you know, terror attack. I've been on the, I've been on this show, you know, numerous episodes, you know, talking about the threat from, you know, I Islamic terrorism, but, you know, I'm always always sceptical of these the, these types of laws uh, as, you know, the way that, you know, it's finally going to lead to, you know, us finally thwarting every terror attack. Well, uh, I think that generally that these things eventually are uh, abused. Uh, they, of course, will be. Um, you know, any power that you give as an individual uh, to the government, you know, will be eventually abused uh, if that government isn't held accountable. And and after all, you know, sovereignty, you know, isn't given; it is taken. And definitely, you know, I can be a bit hawkish on this uh, in the regard that I would prefer uh, to have a moratorium on, uh, you know, immigration from uh, terrorism hotspots. Um, you know, not necessarily. It, it could might not necessarily, uh, you know, be Islamic. You know, the the threat could change. So that's why I say terrorism hotspots. So they they therefore we can we can you know control. We can we can curb uh, this issue. And I think that the best way to deal with it, uh, you know, is not to have a police state where the government watches us all the time and, and where the all our data is stored. You know, I appreciate security, I appreciate national security, I love our police, our army, uh, you know, our intelligence agencies, but I certainly do think that uh, this is going too far and I think that the solution in itself is not granting these people visas for the foreseeable future. These people, I mean, anyone who comes from probably the seven countries that Trump listed in his, uh, in his moratorium, uh, just, just full out, uh, full out, just blanket, uh, I guess you could say ban of immigration from terrorism hotspots for the foreseeable future so our civil liberties aren't eroded in such a manner. I mean, uh, what I always point to is, like, the UK, I mean, it's pretty much a CCTV police state uh, over there, yet they have, you know, basically a terror attack you know, every month. I mean, you know, having all these, you know, anti-terror measures ha hasn't, you know, hel helped the UK at all. And often the time uh, after these terror attacks happen, it's the, the terrorist suspect is always known to police. They could have acted, but didn't. Yes, well, it seems that we could contradict ourselves here, Tim, because both of us probably have a trouble with the presumption of guilt being switched around because obviously there is a potential for government tyranny, you know, being able to eventually, maybe in the future, not now, not now of course, but not being able to, uh, so potentially, sorry, being able to, say, lock up 
far right people, like our uh, maybe Hansen, I would necessarily want to call her far right if she was causing a ruckus or she said that we should ban Muslim immigration, you know, uh, or she incited, you know, through some kind of interpretation violence and therefore it is, you know, perceived to be terrorism. Whether that will actually be used to, you know, whether that will be abused to crack down on, you know, political threats. Obviously, in you wrote a brilliant article about this, Tim, uh, the censorship of the far right in Britain. So the, the, these terrorism uh, laws can be expanded to include political threats to, to governments as well. Uh, and that is why it is, is so worrying. Uh, and I think that the simple solution is, uh, is to have a ban on immigration from pro problematic areas. And now whether the shift changes from, you know, radical Buddhists in Southeast Asia from, say, Islamic terrorism or, you know, whether it changes to be radical anarchists in the future who all happen to, you know, be in kind of some s South American and they're all in some commune, some utopia, you know, if the threat changes, I think that the law should change. I definitely blanket Muslim ban is bad, but certainly banning uh, people who, uh, or just banning entire regions or, or countries that come uh, through, if they are proven to be uh, kind of uh, breeding grounds of terrorism, extremism, and kind of, you know, just, a, a, you know, an anti- Western anti-Israel kind of mentality. A lot of these Palestinian kids, for instance, are just you know told from a young age to to kill Jews. So we need to keep people out who are radical, uh, you know, in the regard that they hate the West, they want to kill us, and they want to cause harm to us. And we need to you know have a, a strict kind of um, a ban on terrorism hotspots. And I think we need to do that now rather than eroding civil liberties in such a fashion. Yeah, I definitely agree. That is the most foolproof way to, you know, prevent the, you know, likelihood of a terror a terror attack. You know, don't import more people from places around the world where, uh, you know, Islamic terrorism or you know Islamism is is known to to take place. I mean, you know, what it's basically the 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 consequence for us of you know having you know open immigration is that you know we we get or not only do we get you know this increase in crime and terrorism but we also get our you know civil liberties taken away. It, it's certainly a lose lose and and all this is to pursue the 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 left's you know idyllic beautiful utopian goal of multiculturalism. And we can just see how, you know, destructive that has been. Not only has it increased crime, you know, not only has it, you know, caused massive havoc to our infrastructure, but it also has eroded our civil liberties in such a fashion that we probably won't ever be able to get them back again um, in the foreseeable future. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.